Hello everyone, welcome to Josh's Boxes. My name is Josh, and today we're going to plan an adventure using the Mecha Hack. So in the last video that I did, I created a character using Mecha Hack. And I talked a little bit about the system, so if you're interested in watching that video, um, and you're on a computer, a link will pop up right there for you to watch it. But today, what the plan is, is now that, you know, I've shown how to use the rules to create a character, we're going to use this book to now plan an adventure because there are some really great GM tools in here. So that's the plan for today. We're going to just use the tables that are provided to randomly generate an adventure and see how it goes. So as a very brief overview about Mecha Hack, it is a system based on the game Black Hack. Um, it's very rules light. It's created by Absolute Tabletop, and it's all about, you know, you're piloting these giant robots, and you go on missions to fight giant monsters or, you know, go on stealth missions or whatever. It's very similar to, like, Pacific Rim or... Gundam or even there's you know ways that you could play like Transformers or Voltron or those kind of things. Basically any game about big robots fighting stuff can be played using the Mecha Hack. So that's the kind of um, adventure that we're going to be planning today is it's probably going to end up you know being focused on as the characters being giant robots and fighting something. <laughs> but that's just a brief overview of the system. Let's go to the PDF. So here I've got the Game Master Tools section of the rule book. As you can see, it's not anything crazy. It's mostly roll tables. You've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven roll tables and then some like little tips and optional rules for being a you know a gm or like you can like these are rules to essentially have like a voltron style game where all the players control one single mech um and you know how to do like skill challenges and stuff and so these are some you know good tips and the most useful part i think is the roll tables. so we're going to use the roll tables I have a document prepared over here with um, places to put all these roll tables, and we're just going to roll in these roll tables, fill out each of these things, and hopefully have the skeleton of an adventure by the end. So first we need enemies, objective, and location. So let's see. We need the D10. So our enemies are going to be nine well-outfitted Imperials. Wow. Well, outfitted materials. The objective is going to be five recovery and rescue. Interesting. Recover, free, and rescue. And the location is going to be eight. A derelict battle cruiser. Interesting. Cool. Let's get a mission opener for rise to action from below using abandoned tunnels. Hmm. Not sure how that would work in a derelict battle cruiser, but we'll uh, see what we can do. Hazard. Seven. Incorrect intel. The mission begins with an enemy surprise attack. That's cool. Incorrect intel. Okay, complication, what the heck? Okay, that's weird. Um, complication. 
Nine, fog or smoke fills the area, making it impossible to see without sensors. Area filled with smoke. Can't see without sensors. Environment. Boom, seven, polar, deep crevices, avalanches, and frozen lakes. I'll just do polar. Enemy tactics. Number two, favor speed and ferocious melee attacks, charging into close range. Charge into close range. Range and loot. I'm gonna roll on this table twice because I like to give cool loot. Okay, so we got a D8 for this, the the row, and a D6 for the column. So I got a five and a three. Explosive rounds. Explosive rounds. That's cool. And let's roll again. My dice fell off. Seven and a two, a boost kit. All right, cool. So as you can see, this is the skeleton of adventure. And I know I just kind of like went through that really quick, but let's, let's go over these. Let's try and weave some connective tissue through them. So we've got well-outfitted Imperials, recovery and rescue operation inside a derelict battle cruiser. We're in a polar environment. We're going to be going using abandoned tunnels. So this is what I'm thinking. The The story idea will be that obviously the characters are some sort of rebels who a fellow rebel team, maybe someone trying to secure, you know, get away with um, important data or like a spy was caught or something. And so our team needs to go in and get them back. And But the problem is that Boom, Imperials are everywhere. So maybe, okay, so maybe they were in an Imperial battle cruiser, and we had a spy, our, our rebels had a spy within the Imperials who tried to escape. Um, they, um, they like attacked or sabotaged the battle cruiser, but were caught in the act. So now they're imprisoned and we need to get them back. So maybe like derelict, I, you know, imagine rather than being like floating in space, it'll be like just not oper not fully operational. And it like crashed into the polarized caps of the nearest planet. And so they're like working on the repairs for these Imperials. And so this is going to be like a very stealth heavy thing where Okay, the area is filled with smoke. That will help. So, okay, so this is what we'll do. I'm thinking the characters as an opener are going through abandoned tunnels. Maybe that's like the vents or shafts or something. They like go in. There's, you know, maybe like polar caves. That's probably what we'll do. We'll do some like ice crevices or something that this ship crashed right next to. So they're going to sneak through the the tunnels, but then when they get out, boom, incorrect intel, the mission begins with an enemy surprise attack. So at the end of this tunnels, as soon as they've entered, boom, they've got these, these um, enemies that they have to deal with. If they don't deal with them, then the whole ship will be on high alert. But if they do deal with them, then they'll be fine. And because of whatever sabotage the rebel did to um, disable the ship, it will be like filled with smoke. So it's going to be all like lots of sensor checks, which will be interesting. And because of the smoke, like shooting guns is going to be really hard. So that's probably why the enemies will be charging into close range. Cool. I think we have like a pretty cool adventure there. It's like sneaking through these, The you know, the idea is sneaking through these tunnels. Boom, deal with these enemies who are expecting you. Then... Um, sneak through the ship and find the the spy and get them out. So 
that'll be cool because it's like an alternative objective. It's not about killing all the Imperials, which is good because they're they're well outfitted. So I imagine these enemies will be really hard. Uh, and so the players hopefully have high mobility scores where they can go around <laughs> sneaking and stuff. Um, cool. So I think we have a good, good layout of like a general mission. I think that's cool. We've got some some cool ideas and I would be ready to play this. Like I would want to play this right now. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, I want to, let's over to the, the stat blocks and see if we can get some stat blocks for some well-outfitted Imperials. And, you know, like a, like two or three different types probably of, of well-outfitted enemies. And then we'll also um, probably I'll try and come up with like a very, very basic map of how this place looks. So um, let's head over to the enemies. Okay, so here we are at the PDF. We got the enemies. Um, this is what a, a stat block looks like. Super simple. You've got the name, what the hit die is, which is essentially, it's kind of like the, the difficulty um, in other games. You know, like this is like the enemy's rating. Um, kind of like CR, I guess, um, but not really because it's not like, you know, one um, hit die enemy is good for like, one party it doesn't translate exactly the same but it's like roughly like obviously a, a hit die three monster or robot is going to be way more powerful than a hit die one so it's like the higher the hit die the more overall power it has um and this is like what like a generic thing for enemies you know if it's like level one they do 1d4 damage and have eight max hit hp but i think there will be We'll be able to find um, find some good I think we'll be able to find good stats in here. And I'm looking at this mecha ace fully outfitted battle worn mecha piloted by an ace. So I mean fully outfitted right there, fully outfitted and well well outfitted. Yeah. So this guy can definitely do some damage. <laughs> I mean, he does like 1d8, and these guys only have, you know, like between their health and their armor, 13 hit points or something. So, like, this guy could definitely do some damage. Um, so I think this could be a good potential enemy. Um, and I can definitely see there being, like, labor bots. The labor bot stuck out to me because obviously you're going to have guys who are working on the ship to fix it. So got some labor bots. Got some maybe uh, like a handful of mecha aces that they'll definitely want to try and sneak past because this guy could definitely, <laughs> definitely do some damage. And... I can see an ion emplacement being here as well because it's a ship, you know, so it makes it make sense that ships have that. Hmm. Okay, yeah, so this is what I'm thinking. So they go through the tunnel and they run into the labor bots because they, they got that incorrect intel. So that's what they run into at the beginning is the labor bots. And then... As they're, you know, sneaking throughout the the prisoner itself is going to be guarded by a mecha ace. Definitely, there will be at least one mecha ace there guarding the spy. And uh, let's see. I think as far as just like the guys that they'll find on the ship will be like lots of. Lots of a mix between Frontier Patrol Mecha and Mecha Aces. Like maybe you'll have like, let's make a, like a little table. So they got enemies, labor bots, 
Frontier Mecha. Frontier Patrol Mecha. Patrol Mecha and Face. Boom. Okay, so then the labor bots will definitely be um, at the beginning, and then they'll have to dodge Frontier Patrol Mecha all throughout the hallways and maybe the occasional Mecha Ace. And then there will definitely be a Mecha Ace guarding the prisoner. So let's do a mission outline. We've got part one, tunnels. So mission outline, part one, tunnels. Then part two was part two is sneaking through hallways. Part three is the prison. Cells. Cool. So, my, how are they going to get this loot? Maybe they'll find. Okay, so part one tunnels. Let's make this a numbered list. So, there's not one. So, Incorrect intel. Told that tunnels are secure. Actually have labor bots in them. Okay, and then sneaking through hallways full of smoke requires um, our sense sensor tests at controls of mecha. Let's do like a little D6. So like if they roll a one, it'll be labor bots, a labor bot, a two through five, two five are frontier patrol mecha. And then a six is the mecha face. Two. Oh, and um, let's see. Defeating the labor bots gives boost kit. And then... Um, if Mecha Ace is encountered, drops explosive rounds. Cool. So that's how we'll get the loot to them. And then prison cells. Spy is guarded by Mecha Ace. And in, let's do like sentence to prison. Let's do one of those um, ion emplacements as well. That could be cool to have it like like a century turret essentially. Um, ion emplacement. Okay, oh, oh let's do this. Um, guarded by Mecha Ace. If Mecha Ace can sound the alarm, An ion in placement will be activated. Okay, so this is like our layout right here. We've got, you know, they're starting out in the tunnels. 
Um, let's make it clear that it's polar, polar tunnels sneaking through hallways of sabotaged ship. And then finding the spy in the prison cells. Cool. And then they have to, to make their way back to the tunnels, make their way back to tunnels to get picked up and mission. Cool. Awesome. I think this is a cool adventure. Definitely a unique one. Let's make this a heading. But I think this could be really fun one shot right here. And I got it just by rolling on those random tables. So very, very cool. I think that shows the power of the mecha hack right there in what, like 10, 15 minutes. I don't know how long I've been going, but I'd guess ballpark 15 minutes. I have an entire one shot plan that I think is really cool. And I don't think that anything needs to be added to this. Just um, if I were actually doing this adventure, I would um, write down the stats for the enemies. I think I'll, let's see. Let's do, I'll just copy and paste this. <laughs> That'll be easier. Boom. So there we go. This, these two pages are now everything I need to run the adventure. And that a lot of that was just getting down the stat blocks. So as you can see, the tools make this system really easy to run. And the PDF makes it even easier because I can just copy and paste, but like, boom, we've got an entire adventure right here and we've got the enemies this is like everything we need on two pages we've got everything we need um so i'm going to grab a scratch piece of paper drop a map really quick for this area like a very very basic map show you guys what that looks like and that'll be everything i'll give my my final thoughts after that so i'll see you in just a sec Hey guys, it's the next day, but I have my map made up, so let's show you it. So, here's the very basic map that I made up. Um, as you can see, the players will start right here in the tunnel, and then I just gave, you know, these different compartments, kind of generic spaceship stuff. So you got the hangar and the thrusters and the reactor here in the middle, so this is going to be where the labor bots are at. And then you've got various rooms. And you've got the, let's see, storage room and the prison cell is right there. So this is where they're going to be working their way. Um, but they kind of have to work their way through the rooms and either stealthing or fighting their way through to get to the prison cell. Um, and, you know, there's like the bridge and the reactor and the armory and bunks and stuff like that. So very basic map. I'm not... You know, trying to win an art award or trying to create a very realistic spaceship. I just wanted a basic map to show my players kind of, you know, a layout. Um, I might make another copy that's just like the same shape, but the rooms aren't labeled. So that way um, the players don't know exactly how to go to the prison cell. Um, unless somehow they got a map, but... I doubt that that will happen. So I'll probably, you know, if I ever actually ran this, I would I would trace this and not label all the rooms. Um, and then on the other side, I made a map of the actual prison room because that's like the big main room. So let me show you that. So here's the map that I made of the prison cell room. Pretty simple. You can see all the little individual cells and I'd probably just pick a random one that the spy would be in and then the ace would be like somewhere here in the middle and they have to either fight here's like the door the entrance and then here's that gun and the ace will be in the middle 
and you have to stop him before you can run over and turn the gun on. So that's what the prison encounter would look like. So like there's one specific room within the ship and then there is the ship as a whole. So very basic map for my encounter because I would just be running this with my buddies. Obviously if this were like a published module, I would do a lot better, but just running this with friends, I am not gonna go crazy with a map. <laughs> but that is the whole counter. That is everything. I've got the stats, I've got the map, I've got the plan. That's the whole thing. So I hope that this showed it off the system pretty well. I really like it. I think I'm a big fan of roll tables for getting ideas. I don't think I'm very good at coming up with ideas, but I'm good at taking um, ideas and changing them and putting them together, or at least I'm better at that than just coming up with ideas. I think probably most people are like that. I don't know, but I, I think that these rule tables are really good. I think that they give you all the basics that you need. Obviously, it's just a couple rule tables. Um, and like, you know, you don't have to use every single one. If you're planning an adventure, you just, you know, maybe you pick one from the hazard section and one from the, you know, the mission objective or whatever. Um, just use it how you need it. But I think that give you a lot of tools for what you need. You know, it fits in very well with the rest of the system where it's very useful, but also very simple. So super good. I think that these GM tools are great. I planned a really cool adventure and I have, you know, planned a couple adventures on the side really quick, testing these tools out. So I give them two thumbs up. Super good. So that is um, my review of the GM tools for Mecha Hack. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know by leaving a like. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. Or if you see that I did something wrong, <laughs> please leave that in the comments as well. If you're interested in picking up Mecha Hack, there will be a link in the description below where you can go to Absolute Tabletop Store and pick it up yourself. It's not sponsored or anything, obviously, but just for full disclosure, it's not sponsored, but there will be a link in the description. I just think that they're a great company, and you should definitely check them out. Um, again, if you want to watch the video where I create characters, that will also be linked in the description below. below or if you're on a computer, it will be you know, a little pop-up right here. And if you want to see me continue with this series, my next episode of Test Drive series will be about just giving my thoughts. I've run a session of Mecha Hack. So I'd like to give my thoughts on how the session or how the game is in actual play. So I'm excited and looking forward to that. And if you are, uh, subscribe so that you can see when it comes out. But that's everything. So until next time, ciao. Wow. Okay.